Richard Saunders is next. And Richard Saunders is, is one, another one of my favorite human beings in the world. He's from Australia, which, you know, just look beyond that. He's still really great. Um, no, of course, uh, one of my favorite human beings. Uh, uh, I didn't have a, a chance to write a limerick, but I will. I, afterwards, I, I will. Richard, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, please welcome to the stage the one and only Richard Saunders. There once was a man called Geo. You'll have to make up the rest, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm not... No limerick for Richard Saunders? What, what's it all coming to? Thank you very much. It's such a pleasure to be here once again at the amazing meeting. I, I, I guess you feel the same way I do. Those people who come back year after year, you find yourself down at the Del Mar bar or in the corridor here or sitting there and you think, did I really go away? Was there a whole year between TAMs? I think they just wheel me downstairs to a cupboard under the roulette table and open the door before TAM and out I spring and here I am again. This year, keeping the brain sort of theme going, uh, I'm going to be looking at what I call looking into or through or at or with the psychic mirror. In other words, what do psychics, believers, maybe conspiracy theory people think when they look into the mirror? What's their world like? And what do they think when they see us, the skeptical community? Last year I gave a talk here. We could get the slides up. With the, are you seeing my slides or me? Oh, you're seeing my slides. Excellent. Last year I gave a talk which was called um, Looking into the Mind of the True Believer. Again, it's sort of like a little adventure in psychology. This is one of the, mo one of the most interesting things I find about this whole skeptical adventure. I love looking for monsters and UFOs and spoon bending and all that. But the adventure of looking into the, the mind, the thinking process, especially of the believers, is personally, for me, it's, it's endlessly fascinating. First, though, I thought I'd bring you a little something from Australia. A genuine card there. I wonder if they spoke to Mr. Randy before they saw that. I thought that was very appropriate. We have many wonderful mystics and seers and uh, strange people in Australia, but this woman really took my attention. And this is a skill, a rare skill, that I think we all should have. She talks to chickens. <laughs> does your chicken have a psychological problem? What does the chicken say? <laughs> I'm sure she can translate that. Australia, if you haven't come to Australia, it's a wonderful place full of people who talk to chickens. <laughs> James Randi is a frequent visitor to Australia. We are so lucky. In fact, James Randi was one of the reasons Australian skeptics started in the first place. He came in 1980, did a series of water divining tests, and that led to the formation of the Australian skeptics. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Talks to chickens. What's wrong with that? Briefly, uh, as, as most of you know, I'm the president of the Australian Skeptics. I've been involved with many things over the years, including the James Radge Educational Foundation Million Dollar Challenge, which we're hopefully, hopefully working towards again this year. Uh, I've been on TV. I do TV and movies, and I invented the origami flying pig, which some of you have seen around. After a request from Mr. Randy, he I, I've, I've made rabbits in for him and something years ago, and he said, Richard, make me a, a flying pig. And that was the result. I'm very pleased that you asked me to do that, Randy. Um, and I love it when people come up to me and show me the pig that they've made, the flying pig. It's, for, for an origami creator, that's very flattering. It's somebody that likes your work so much that, 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 that they want to make it. That's, that's just tremendous. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so pleased that Dr. Carl Krusoniski is here at TAM this year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm absolutely thrilled. I, I saw his talk just yesterday, and I know people have been chasing him in the corridor for various reasons. Uh, he's uh, Australia's uh, best-loved science communicator, and just to have him here and, and uh, to experience Tam is a personal thrill for me. Just fantastic stuff. And I do the Skeptic Zone podcast, which is coming up next week to episode 300. I'm very happy about that. 
300 <laughs> every week getting out a podcast. I think Stephen Novella and a few other people know that, what that's like. And uh, here's the gang that helped me put the show together, my reporters, so to speak. Uh, those of you who listen to the show there, the, the uh, faces behind the names you know so well. Our newest reporter is Joe Alabaster there in the top uh, section, who's doing a wonderful uh, segment for us called Evidence, Please. And very soon it's her birthday. So I'm going to put my little recorder up there. If everybody could say after three, happy birthday, Joe Alabaster. One, two, three. If she's uh, watching the Twitter feed now, she's just gone red, and <laughs> that's fantastic. I think it's, somebody might know, but it's 2 o'clock in the morning in Australia, or 3 o'clock, or some, some silly hour. Fan I love doing The Skeptic Zone. And in the last 10 minutes, I have launched my documentary, The Vaccination Chronicles. It's now live to the world. This is a half-hour documentary um, made over the last couple of years interviewing people of their true stories of a time before vaccination. It's a message to young parents saying, when these people uh, were younger, they saw firsthand polio wards, iron lungs, and this sort of thing. If you get a chance, please Google the Vaccination Chronicles. Um, it was a personal project of mine, and I'm very pleased that that has been launched officially here at TAM. And it's, a, it's a good feeling. It, it truly is a good feeling. It, it's good to, uh, over the years I've picked up many s skills here and there, like origami, but one of them is video production and video editing, and it's nice to use those skills uh, to create something like this. Let's think about part of the human condition and why we are here and why other groups who think differently are somewhere else. And I think it's pretty safe to say that we want and need and like and wish to be on the right side, on the winning side. We've got the right idea. We've got it right. Not those other people. They may come around to our point of view, but we're in the group that is on the right track. This is a universal thing. That's why people come here. This is why people go to Mind Body Spirit Festivals, or as we call them in Australia, Mind Body Wallet Festivals, because that's their people too. And they're right. And that's, the, that's absolutely fine. I, I can completely understand that. Please keep that in mind. I keep that in mind when I'm dealing with people who have these claims. Most of the people I've met have been sincere about it. They really have. There is a small residual of people who are not. And we'll get to that shortly. It's very important to remember. Now, let's see what happened one time many years ago. And there's a few things to, to look out for here. I would draw your attention when the time comes. Listen to the studio audience. Listen to the studio audience. And this is a very good example of how believers react to skeptics. And this has audio too, so we might need to adjust that once it starts playing. That needs to go up here. Yeah. Number four. Who could ever forget skeptic James Randi and his appearance on the Don Lane Show? Randy was on to argue to Don and the audience that psychics were shams. The people that say people are fakes, you said Doris Stokes is a fake. Notice here how he first bends the key on the chair before pretending to bend it by rubbing it. The way you bent it before. Unfortunately, Randy made the mistake of questioning the powers of Yuri Geller and Don's friend Doris Stokes. And it was Don who spat the dummy. Now you didn't rub no, 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 that. No, wait a minute, just a minute. Let me finish what I'm going to say and then you can talk, all right? Okay, Don. There are people who will love it because they say it was a great moment in television and they thought it was terrific. And it's, well, look, we're talking about it. But really, Don probably could have done that a bit better. Film with me, but you've I... come here. You're offering five thousand no, no, dollars no, to no. people to say people are fakes. You said Doris Stokes is no, a no. fake. No, I you say Yuri Gell is a fake. fake. No. You came here and you're giving never. everybody a lot of lip never. service, no, 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 and you not. haven't done anything I except show said... us a lot of tricks that you I learned out of your two bit act that you're not I working. Never in. Saw... I don't think he did it as a stunt. I think he probably did feel. He was, you know, angry that his friend was being vilified by this sceptic. You, you come over here with this big reputation, 
You give us a lot of lip service about all the stuff that you're going to prove. You go against a lady like Doris Stokes, who never harmed anybody in her whole life, and you call her a charlotte and a fake. You know you a said, great deal about it. Yes, I do. You said that she was a liar on the no, radio. No. You called her a liar. No. And that woman would no, lie to I anybody. And I don't know whether she's right or wrong, I but she would lie to anybody. We're going for a thing. commercial break, and you can piss That's off. Right. We'll be back with Diana Trail. Yes, Don, that's one way to go to a commercial break, and here's another. Come well, that clip has been played every year on Australian TV for years and years and years. And as a, a relatively uh, younger man, I was watching at home when that all happened. That's the first time I actually saw uh, James Randi in any sense. Or oh, that or Happy Days, I think, Mr. Randi. That might have been it. But what a reaction. What a reaction, not only from Don Lane, who is uh, an American man. He, he died a few years back. He was an American who came to Australia and made it big on, on television in Australia. But did you hear the audience cheering on? Isn't that interesting? And it just reminds us that the, the reaction from the audience, that suddenly they're winning against Mr. Randy, or, or they, who they perceive as the arrogant guy, you know. And Don Lane is their friend and the TV host and their hero. And I, I could tell, I could sense that just in the cheering and clapping, it was a win. Again, we're on the winning side. In that case, the studio audience was on the winning side because Don Lane showed that silly Mr. Randy what's what and stormed off in, the, in that respect. Very interesting what's going on in the mind. Here's another clip just from La the amazing meeting last year with uh, Susan Blackmore. And listen, it's a very short clip, but she says something very interesting. Haunted houses, I investigated poltergeists, I did all kinds of things. Um, Can we turn I was that up? always in trouble with the, um, with the um, believers. I, I would tell you, when I was a believer, um, I did not get hate mail from skeptics. Are you surprised? Well, when I became a skeptic, I got plenty of hate mail from the true believers who know about spirits and nice things like that and good energies. So she, if, in case you didn't hear it, she said that when she was a uh, believer, she didn't get hate mail from skeptics, but when she turned into a skeptic, she got hate mail from the believers. Uh, you start screwing around with people's deeply held beliefs, you're going to get hate mail. I'm sure that uh, you're all well aware of that. It's protection. Uh, it's, sometimes it's anger, sometimes it's wanting to lash out, I guess. It's a feeling of betrayal. If she was a believer and turned to an, into a skeptic, then there's this betrayal thing. And I think we can all sense that. I mean, heavens, if there was a um, famous skeptic who gave it all up and was a turncoat and went to the other side, I guess we'd feel betrayed too. So I can understand that. But it was interesting that she said she got the hate mail when she became the skeptic. I find that very interesting, again, from a psychological point of view. Now, getting back to what I said before, and Mr. Randy said in 1980 when he visited Australia for these water divining tests, the people he's concerned about, or the people he, he comes across most of the time, are the people who innocently deceive themselves. And then there's the small residual of people out there who try to uh, defraud their fellow citizens. It's exactly what I have discovered in all these years. Most people I deal with are sincere. They're not out to con anybody, to hurt anybody, to scam anybody. And I always have to keep that in mind. At so many times in the media, uh, the, when I'm doing media, the media will just put people into two categories. Either they're genuine psychics or they're evil, scamming con artists. This whole concept of the innocent believer seems to be lost on them. Maybe it's too hard for them to relate that to their audience. But it's, it's the biggest area that we've discovered. Somebody else said, there are no greater liars in the world than quacks of sick for their except for their patients. Benjamin Franklin, who w used to write under the name of Richard Saunders, I kid you not. <laughs> Go figure. What he meant by that, what he meant by that was the people who, have been, who, who buy into a system, quackery for example, acupuncture, homeopathy, he doesn't mean they're lying. He means that they will defend this system to the end. So in that, that's what uh, Benjamin Franklin was getting at in that sentence. Again, it's this entrenched belief, and you will defend your entrenched beliefs. This is very human. This is very human. And 
again, when you wake up in the morning and you read your skeptical list, that should be at the top. People, many people are sincerely believe in these things and they will defend it. And as a skeptical investigator, we have to keep that in mind. Reactions from believers to skeptics. Some years ago, I um, did a couple of series of a TV show in Australia called The One, where I was uh, a judge, the skeptical judge, alongside uh, Stacey DeMarco there, who was the believing judge, if I can put it that way. And psychics would do various things for us, and we would comment on them. And at the end of the show, I got to kick one off every week. That wasn't fun at all. <laughs> However, it's, it, in this day and age, and especially in the last series of the show, um, I was at the, the little party when the, the first show went to air, because we taped it weeks before, and then it was all edited, and uh, we all gathered for a little drink, and the show went to air, just a celebration to, to see it go. The producers are now, and I'm sure this is the same here, when a new show goes out, the producers are glued to Twitter. Instant reaction, right there. What does the audience think of my show as they're watching it? It's a revolution, it really is. And the Twitter stream coming from the show was quite interesting. Don't worry if you can't read some of those at the moment. And many of the people tweeting away were believers, and you can imagine how uh, anti-skeptical they were defending their point of view again. And what it shows to me too is people are not afraid to voice their opinions on the internet. <laughs> oh my goodness me. It's none of this. I better consider what I'm going to say. It's straight away. I'm thinking this, I'm tweeting it, it's out to the world. So we got interesting reactions. That one's just coming up now. Uh, <laughs> You know, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, I'm a performer. When I'm on that show, I know I'm there not only to give a, what we might call an expert opinion on these matters, but I need to perform on a television show. And I tried to be reasonable and friendly, and I'd smile and all the rest of it doesn't matter. I was a skeptic, therefore I was the arrogant bastard. I really was. However, it's a two-way street. Because one of the, uh, our uh, contestant psychics was a rather short-statured lady. And uh, people were being mean to her because of that. And I found that um, not nice at all. I don't care if this Jess is rad, is a skeptic or a believer who, or what she is. To just say someone looks creepy is simply rude. It's just wrong. I, I think that's horrible. Um, if they say things about me, I'm, I guess I'm used to it. If they said my nose was big, I might have complained. But um, yeah, so this is again this instant. I must say this now, even if it hurts people, I don't care. I'm going to tweet and, and say these things. This this is interesting. Again, I love this uh, this reaction on blogs and Twitter and Facebook, uh, and this is coming up to. A situation I'll speak about in a moment. There are still people out there who cannot believe that there are skeptics and are absolutely gobsmacked that there's a group of skeptics and they have a president. It's beyond them. It's it, what? How can this possibly be? So you can imagine their reaction to, to skeptical outreach and skeptical information. <laughs> skeptics have their own association and a president? What? That's crazy. Uh, we try to test people in Australia, as we do here at the uh, amazing meeting. Currently, we're in negotiations with this lady, uh, Donna Abrahams, who is trying to put together a TV show, a 12 series uh, documentary. And good luck to her. Everybody uh, has the right to make their way in this world if they want to do that. Uh, and she's looking for funds. So I noticed a, a report on a, by her on Facebook. I think it was Facebook on the internet. And so this led to us offering her the money, but some of her claims are the, the sort of thing that we would get from a, someone who is generally thinks they're clairvoyant or psychic. Remote viewing, psychometry, 
speaking to the dead, communicating in this sort of fashion. So I wrote on, on the Facebook, uh, I said, well, this is one for the Victorian skeptics, our people in the state of Victoria, I'm in New South Wales. Uh, I read, the, uh, uh, she did a, a reading for a newspaper reporter and I read it and it seemed to me like a typical cold reading. Now, when I look at that again, it, it's a little abrupt, I think, a, a tiny bit dismissive of me. It's not exactly rude or exactly arrogant, but it, it, maybe I could have been a, a little bit more polite. Uh, Donna saw this and um, I guess it sparked her interest. $100,000 $100, from Australian skeptics would help her cause no end. So she's put it on her Facebook, um, saying, well, you know, she might give it a go. She might try for our money. So then we got some inter inter interesting reactions <coughs> excuse me, from her, her friends, her Facebook friends. First of all, I, I admit my reply was a little, you could consider it uh, abrupt, but that, for the believer, that's just absolutely rude and arrogant and horrible, as you can see there. What a rude, arrogant negative he is. Um, go get him, you know, us against them, this sort of thing. And then, uh, here we go. Whoops, I meant a rude, arrogant, negative dick. There you go. She must know my name's Richard. That's all I can assume. So... And then she wanted to find out more information. So I was a bit abrupt with her. I said, you can't call me a dick and expect to converse, uh, me to converse with you. So I was, yeah, maybe I let them get to me a little bit. It happens. You know, it happens. So, but then her friends had already made up their minds that these skeptics were out to ridicule and belittle and make fools of people, as you can see there with the, the follow-up uh, postings to her Facebook. Um... So, so one chap there, Steve, a narrow-minded idiot. This is me. I'm a narrow-minded idiot. There is no legislation that supports stupidity, so on and so on. I said it's past your bedtime. And, and there's he's repeated it down the bottom in, in shouting. Yeah, you're a narrow-minded, rude, insolent idiot. I mean, I, does he think this is going to progress matters? No, he's just some probably some kid who is now used to actually saying whatever the hell they like on the internet, be it rude, be it insulting. And there's a lot of people who are going to discover in the coming years, it's going to be, um, they're going to find them getting lawsuits. It's got to happen. Kids or younger people these days are so used to, to putting on the internet whatever they're feeling and thinking, they're going to end up in court. You know, I, I think that's going to happen. So that's interesting. And then we always get what I call the wise friend with a sage advice for, our, for me and our psychic, um, suggesting that it's easy to, to test paranormal people or this is how you should do it. Uh, par paranormal is simply things vibrating at a frequency we're not normally trained in. It goes on and on and on. But look out for the wise friend. They can bend your ear for two hours and say nothing. But again, they're coming from this point of view. And then we get one of the arguments that I... I, I've heard so many times over the years, I've heard it on my own TV show, which is, of course, do I believe in love? <laughs> and initially, I didn't answer the question because it's just, it's, it's such a ridiculous question. It, and I did come back. Of course, there's only one answer. Yes, of course I believe in love. Ah, but you can't measure it, can you, skeptic? Therefore, you'll hear it if... if Believe me, folks, you'll hear it. You'll hear it. They'll say, do you believe in love? Have you ever been in love? You say, yes. Well, prove it then, skeptic. Ha ha, I win. I think that needs its own special logical fallacy. The, all you need is love. That's right. So, but, at, I mostly tried to be polite, constructive, engaging, charming. <laughs> Thank you. And even the people who were originally saying, you arrogant so-and-so, had to admit that I spent a lot of time and effort trying to politely answer their questions. And that, I, I thought that was great. You know, at least to some of them, I'm not the cartoon skeptic, the evil guy in the big black hat or whatever it is, the scientist with the mad lab coat wanting to do, do these things. 
So they're saying, well, they're congratulating me on answering their questions because I did, went to extraordinary lengths to be polite and answer all their questions about our $100,000 challenge. So you can at least charm people sometimes. But here, here, let's look at this reaction again of us against them. And these are, it's it's a little hard to see some of those smaller ones, but pages and pages of saying to Donna, the psychic, Go on and you can do it. Go and win. Uh, Show them up. Collect the money. Wear right. All this sort of thing. Like her cheer squad. Um, The psychology of it is fascinating. Getting behind somebody. It must be the same. I mean, Mr. Randy's going to do something. We're all, in our hearts, we're cheering for what he wants to do. So I can see that happening on this side too. Absolutely. Uh, When it comes to testing people like uh, Donna Abrahams in, uh, in Australia or anybody. I'm, I, I have to just remind everybody that it's not an easy process by no means. And I've certainly discovered that here working at the Million Dollar Challenge over the past three years. Negotiations are lengthy. Fine tuning is lengthy. Making sure everybody's happy. It's a very complicated process. So if anybody ever says to you, oh, testing a psychic can be easy, let's let's do something really quick it's not sincerely folks it's a very complicated uh, business when I was doing it here or doing it in Australia on television many 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 hours for every test to get it right I think for two reasons one we want to keep the applicant very happy and make sure they're comfortable and ready to go and two we want to make sure the test is reasonably tight as tight as we can uh, feasibly make it can take a lot of time Let's look more now at the, um, the believer's reaction, looking into that psychic mirror again. Not so long ago, I was on Australian TV to give my opinion on UFOs. There's a, a man, uh, Damien John Knott, who photographs clouds and skies and sunsets and everything and um, I believes he's photographing paranormal events or unknown events and something like that. I was... The story on the TV show was about him, but they interviewed me as the skeptic, and that expression in the lower part of the screen sums it up, I think. <laughs> I, uh, really, I wasn't so impressed. Okay, I, I really wasn't. I wasn't blown away by his amazing uh, UFO footage. Uh, but he took great umbrage to the fact that I was on the segment. You can imagine, the TV uh, people turn up at your house, they do, film a story about you, and your belief in what he does, which is go out every night and in the evenings and photograph things, and good luck to him, great. If he's doing that, that's great. And suddenly, in the middle of this great story, and you're sitting at home with a beer and everyone's enjoying it, there's Richard Saunders saying, yeah, you know what, I don't think so. I can see, I can see what's going on. So, he, um, he wasn't happy, and he took to Facebook to express his displeasure uh, and basically saying that out in not so many words our test is is fake and he's not going to take it and it's crazy and his friend has chimed in calling me a moron uh, and and things like this that they're, they're not very happy at all no 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 however maybe he changed his mind or his friends convinced him he's out now since then he's interested in applying for our $100,000 challenge, which is his right to do it. But the tirade that he wrote back to us when negotiations started was comical, absolutely comical. It was as if a 16-year-old wrote it trying to be funny. And here's just a little segment of it. Scoring very cheap and silly debating points and laughing at us and it just didn't make sense. So I don't think this is somewhere we're going to progress very far. But again, it's this attitude of let's show up these stupid skeptics. Let's prove that they're wrong. This anger almost within people against what we do, or more importantly, their anger is because we don't believe in what they do. I would think it's more like it. What am I this time? Some sort of bumbling buffoon, am I? Some sort of blunder from down under somewhere? I don't know. 
very interesting. I'm, I'm known around uh, the world for uh, showing up various power balance routines and tricks and things like that. Um, there was a company called Shoozy, and I think they're still going. They're from New Zealand. And this is interesting. I met the, the guy who owns it at a mind body uh, wallet, mind body spirit fair, and we had a bit of an argument, all right, as you can imagine. We had a bit of an argument. And sometime after that, maybe a couple of weeks after that, the following voice messages um, came our way at Skeptics headquarters in Australia. So we'll just play that. Oops. Try that again. Don't, don't get up. It's all right. Here we go. Good fellow here. Hey, it's Gary. Good fellow here. I have to say to the two girl challenge, challenge, we can, the choosy, I'm going to take the challenge for the million dollars because we know you're just big scammers. When can we come and give this challenge to you? We are ready. Just so give me a ring. And Gary, good fellow. So, he called our line and called us scammers, and I'll take your challenge. We chased him for months, and we're in negotiations to test him, and then this happened. Just when we were about to do it, and on national TV, they fled the country. So in a way, I'm sorry I didn't get to test them on national TV, but they fled the country. <laughs> yes. And subsequently, thank you, subsequently I did find out from a source that it was our relentless pursuing of them, and they knew, I think, if they knew that if they came to a real test on national TV, they, then the same fate would uh, befall them as fall power balance. I'm sure of that. That's really good. But hear, hear what he's trying to do, baiting us, taunting us, the stupid scamming skeptics. Another example of this uh, is a similar sort of device called the uh, BioFlow, natural pain relief, which does all sorts. It doesn't do this, by the way. It doesn't they, they weren't using this trick. These are at uh, Spirit Fairs back home. And basically what they say, if you wear this, you know what? We make no claims about it, they say, but our customers tell us that it's helped in these conditions. It's every condition under the sun. It's just ridiculous. So I had a word with these people at their stand. I was um, politely arguing with them and all their claims. I think I'll buy some myself. And the man behind the, the desk there was getting a bit short with me and in a reasonably loud voice. So, for those of you who uh, uh, can't see that, he said um, something, um, which I can't repeat. Um, oh, somebody got the joke. But he was angry because I was distracting his customers. And no, go get out of here. I've got people who are going to buy this, and you're here telling me it doesn't work or, or asking me for evidence. The anger that he told me to do that, uh, it, was, it was just amazing. Again, looking at how people react, believers, and I, and I really think I'm talking about real believers here to skeptics. A number of years, year ago, uh, years ago, Connie Sun, I think that's pronounced, was here right on stage and she did a challenge. She failed and later blamed, basically blamed Banachek for cheating her. Now this is, it happens from time to time. It's what happens in the mind of the believer and they'll get angry about it. They know their powers work. If they don't work, then, ah, oh, I've been cheated by those scamming skeptics. And then, of course, we had Andrew Needles uh, just two years ago, I think, who was here on stage and didn't succeed again. Uh, it was quite obvious. And went home, and later on we discovered he devoted pages on his website to saying how he actually passed our test, by the way. 
If you want to Google uh, Andrew Needles, thank you, James uh, J-Ref. It's a fascinating read. It really is. He took stills out of the official video to prove that these people were actually reacting in the correct way to his um, marvelous power band. It's the mind protecting itself. Mr. Needles sincerely believes in his product. We see this again and again. This is completely normal for people to do this. It really is. And we must keep that in mind. Oh, I've had fun over the years from believers, folks. That's a great letter I got many years ago. Dear Mr. Saunders, so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. The highlighted sections are there. But I must admit, uh, I've been called a mouseketeer of evil by anti-vaxxers. That was fun. But Oh, I'm a wind, windbag, but I love this. Um, I suspect uh, uh, nothing but a bunch of pimples on the asshole of time. The visual image, folks, is quite extraordinary. You'll have to agree. Can you sense the frustration and the anger there? It's fascinating. It really is. So, there's a few truisms, I think. What do they see looking through the psychic mirror back into the real world? What do we see? Undoubtedly, some believers, as we've seen, see skeptics as being too arrogant. Some skeptics see believers as being too stupid. Both these perceptions can be reversed, and sometimes both these perceptions are true. People can be arrogant, people can be stupid on, on both sides of the equation. It's absolutely true. My friend Dr. Chrissy Wilson looked at the, looks at belief in, in this fashion and saying there that uh, belief is so ingrained in us. Once the germ has taken root, it's very hard to overturn that belief, and then... You will do everything to defend your belief. This, again, I'll get back to why I find this area so fascinating. The psychology of believers. The, even the psychology of skeptics, in a way. But really, the psychology of believers and why they believe and how they defend their beliefs. When they look through that psychic mirror into the world, this is how they perceive it. Uh, the negotiations with Donna are ongoing. But look at this. Now, this is from a guy who posted... Um, and really was bitching at me for being too polite. And he said very rude things about Donna. I won't have that. I'm sorry. If we're in, in negotiations with this woman, if you think she's a, a psychic or not, you don't call her horrible names. You, we don't do that. That's wrong. And it, it doesn't get anybody anywhere. Um, so I, I, I said, no, I'm sorry. You can't say that. And he wasn't very happy with me at all. But this, this can happen from skeptics. You know, some skeptics get upset and start calling people names and bad things. Um, maybe it's just me that I, I find that uh, unacceptable. Thank you. Uh, but uh, but don't, please don't paint me as the, the, uh, the angel of virtue here. I, I get angry too. It ha it, we're all human. It does happen. It does happen. I, I just try not to um, let my emotions get away with myself there. Look, before I wind up, I must tell you that uh, in November this year, November the 28th to the 30th in Sydney, Australia, we're having a huge convention. The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe will be there. George Rabb will be there. Uh, our patron, Dick Smith, uh, Bettina Arndt, who is a famous Australian uh, uh, researcher into sex will be there. Sonia Pemberton, who did a very great documentary called Jabbed About Vaccination, will be there. Dr. Rachel Dunlop will be talking. If you're in Sydney, Australia, around uh, the end of November, we'd love to see you at our convention. And that's the hall it's going to be held in. My goodness me, and that looks impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, what a pleasure it is to be at my seventh or eighth TAM. I guess I'm losing count. And what a privilege it is to be uh, also working with such people as Chip and Banachek and Jamie on, on the Million Dollar Challenge and Mr. Randy, of course, and everybody who helps. So thank you very much. Richard Saunders. Richard Saunders. Wait, Richard, wait. Ready? Okay. Not to step on your applause. I, I'm sorry I did that. But Richard, I come hat in hand. I had no limerick for you and... In the future, I'll pay, but please let me say, thanks for being the last speaker of TAM. Richard Saunders.